that's a little more of that sneak peek. I was like, oh, it's about to be dope. <laughs> it was. All right. So we're going to have our next speaker. Uh, his name is Al Brown. He was introduced earlier into it. So he's going to be speaking with you today. Let's give him a hand as he comes up. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Say it, praise God, everybody. Praise God. Uh, I came here from Papa Bluff, man. I've been incarcerated. I just got out of prison two weeks ago. The journey that I walked has been an enlightenment, a reconnection to my fire with God. And it, and it got to the point in me where many times in my life, I looked out here upon the world and I seen people out in, in, in society, they still locked up in their prisons. They still trapped in their circumstances and they still looking for a way out. And they look for an answer, but they can't find it. It's like this place. If you turn the lights out right now and somebody lit one little match, everybody in here focus on their life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you get to see the brighter picture of it and start reading and reading and receiving the word and the changes start happening to your life, that little match will turn into a flashlight. And then from a flashlight, it'll turn into some headlights. And then out of nowhere, your whole life will turn into daylight, out of darkness. You understand what I'm saying? There's gonna be some times in our lives where we gonna be like Meshach or Bendigo drink in that fire. And we always gonna have something over us trying to hold us down and weaken us so that we can't move on. But there's nothing can touch you if you got faith. Yeah. There's nothing can touch you if you believe that the word is true. There's nothing can move you if you understand the power of God. You got people who are domineering. Yeah. They try to control things. They become so controlling that when God start getting control of them, they don't want to believe in God no more. You get up see some of those? Yeah. Then you got the ones that's emotional. Them the ones that, that, that they, they want to be in control of their feelings, but they don't want their circumstances to make them feel the way they feel. So God takes over their feelings, but he changes them and they don't like that. So them are emotional people who stray away from God. But then you got the biggest one of them all, the intellect. The one that thinks they're so smart, think they know everything, that they try to tell God what's right and what's wrong. And some of the times in my life, as I, as I grew up, I've been every one of them. And each of us have some circumstance in our life. But it's about surrendering. Giving up your old you and turning it into the new you. The Bible talks about how old wine can't fit the new bottle. You want to know why? Because that bottle will break. It messes up the new formation of you. It, 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 it does things to you that makes you don't even look right. And sometimes in society, when you start turning into the new you, as I did, I used to run the streets. I sold a lot of drugs. I did things that maybe in my life that, that I, 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 I'm not proud of at all. And then I've been to prison over and over. And then when I get out, it's, it was a doubt always in me. 
like us out here in these streets, we, we don't have nothing to have security in. And we have to find that it ain't nothing, no other, but in the Word. You can reach out for money. You can reach out for a big house. You can reach out for all the power in the world. But that ain't going to make you happy. The only thing that's going to make you happy is to look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, and y'all say this with me, say, I am beautiful, lead, man. Ain't nothing more beautiful. Don't they make you smile? <laughs> You know, we, we, we look for pretty things in life. We look for happiness. We go try to find somebody to make us happy. But that ain't what God wants told us. He wants you to be in joy. While I was in prison, my sister used to trip because I was, I was in joy. I walked around there smiling. Then the last time I was walking around frowning, cutting up. <laughs> But this time I walked around in there smiling, y'all. Because I, I found a master key. And it's available to each and every one of y'all. You can go through problems and have hope as a key. You can have faith as a key. You can have will as a key. And then when you put them together, you have a master key to go through all the circumstances in your life in pure peace, pure joy, with an answer, without doubt, without fear. It don't matter how old you are, how young you are, what size you are, how short, how tall. Faith is not a respect of a person like God. It's available to everybody. It, it, it lifts you out of things that you never even thought that you could come up out of. It, it, it brings to light the things that you said to everybody, but you hid it on the inside of the whole total truth. It makes you reveal the things that you got in the dark, that you have done in the past, that you may have forgot to ask God to forgive you about. But God is a forgiving God. He don't let us be in shame. We be in shame. We can't sit with our heads down blaming God who's above us. We have to, we have to look up. And like she says, it's a faith walk. This walk is a walk in your life that you ain't never walked before. You may have had all the faith that you didn't learn, but this day is something new. This is a new faith. And you can try this faith over here, you can try this faith over here, but it seems like it don't work because God is trying to give you something new. He's trying to give you a new faith to make you jump over mountains, to make you achieve things that you ain't never achieved in your life. There ain't no boundaries no more. Limitations is only from ourselves. And God is here to set us free. He's here to open up your eyes so you can see things that you ain't seen. He's here to make you open up your ears to hear the words of God that you ain't never heard. He had to strengthen your feet so you can begin this walk. It's time. That's what he sent me here to do. It's a message to begin. It's starting to promote the army of God. You a soldier, you a soldier, you a soldier, you a soldier. And you've been a soldier your whole life fighting the war to win. The only way you lost is when you lost to yourself. But if you lose yourself to who? Jesus. You get a victory. 
You hear me? We conquerors. Amen. Amen. We lion chasers. The devil can't chase me. I chase him. You hear me? Where it talks in the Bible about the loud. David, David, when he made him commander of the army, Bilal chased the lion away. And as he, as he ran in that pit, the, 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 he ran in the pit with the lion. Can you hear the music playing? Do, 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 do. Who gonna come out? Who gonna come out of the hole first with a lion? And out of nowhere, you, you hear it. Do, 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 do. And then a head come out. Boom! You think the arm gonna be off and the body ain't on. But it's Belial coming out that hole. They killed the lion. So as he as he was filling out his thing for the they, they was asking who could be in this position as the head of the arm. And and, and Belial at the time he wasn't thinking about it. All he did was just filling out this thing. I said, what have you done? Well, I chased the lion in the pit and killed it. So when King David seen that, he said, he said, maybe I should make this man the head of my army. You get me? There's things that you can do that you don't even know when you surrender to the power of God. And then your fears will be drunk, will start being conquered. You'll break the chains that hold you down as a prisoner. You will, you will, you will cut loose the sunder that, that holds back your wrist. No more shackles, no more fences, no more walls to hold you back. In Jerusalem, they shouted as they walked around that wall. And they shouted and they shouted and they shouted. And, they, and, 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 and today, that's modernized praise and worship. And out of nowhere, that wall started falling. And it fell down, and the enemy was in our sight. That's what today is, and that's what every day should be. Praise God, y'all. Worship God. Don't sit bound up. If God ain't ashamed of you, why are you ashamed of him? If Jesus ain't ashamed of you, why are you ashamed of him? What if Jesus said, well, if you ain't going to hear me, I ain't going to hear you? What if Jesus said, well, if you can't talk to me, I can't talk to you? What would you do? What if God didn't grieve in you this morning? What you say? What you say? Where would you be? And if you ask yourself, where would you be right now if the world ended? Or people came in that door and they said, whoever in here don't want to die for the Lord, leave. Would you leave? Would you? Some Russians and the Germans were warring. And they came in the church and they said that to them. And the Russians said to the Germans, if, no, if anybody don't worship Christ as a Christian truth, Stay here. But if you if you don't, if you do want to die for, and don't want to die for the Lord, leave. So the ones who, who didn't feel true to God and they, they've been sitting there kind of procrastinating, they got up and, and shot out the door. And they thought they was gonna live. But they got keyed outside the door. And there was only four left in there. And they said, now let's have some real church. You hear me? It's time to have some real church, y'all.